Welcome to Wednesday. You've just been watching Kevin McCarthy and Mitch McConnell uh, at, <clears throat> uh, at, uh, at a pool spray there outside of the White House, outside the West Wing there. Um, it's obviously been a very busy Wednesday. It's been an extraordinarily busy Wednesday for Kevin McCarthy in particular. Uh, I think probably the most newsworthy non uh, infrastructure part of the conversation and the remarks is we heard McCarthy claim that his caucus uh, in ousting Liz Cheney is not questioning the legitimacy of the election. We actually heard him say no. In fact, we just met with the president. So be curious to think what the former president thinks of Kevin McCarthy. Uh, a choice of words there. In fact, we will play that clip to get the exact quote for you as soon as we have it recut. We are expecting also to hear from Speaker Pelosi and Chuck Schumer to hear their version uh, of the meeting and what came out of it. Uh, look, all of this comes after House Republicans met this morning quite quickly and ousted Liz Cheney from their leadership. They did it by a voice vote. They seemed to do it uh, as if they were just having a coffee break. Um, you didn't hear many speeches or anything like that, but they ousted him, ousted her simply due to her criticisms of the party's embrace of Trump's lies about the 2020 election. Biden's first in-person meeting with Mitch McConnell and Kevin McCarthy comes as Republicans seem to have surrendered to Trump and his lie that Biden's election was illegitimate, even as Kevin McCarthy tried to claim at the White House that, though, well, he did meet with the legitimate president. Republicans are framing the ousting of Cheney today as an internal squabble in leadership. That was it about messaging, that it's not about something bigger. Well, we think it is about something much bigger. It is alarming it is an alarming, giant, flashing red warning siren that a major political party in this country is willing to embrace or ignore a problem that is an existential threat to this country's democracy and that they will punish or cancel, to borrow a term that they like to use, someone like Liz Cheney because she is willing to acknowledge that this is a problem in public. The lie that the election was stolen from Trump didn't just fuel Cheney's ouster from leadership. It also fueled a riot, which put every member of Congress, Republicans included, in very real danger. In fact, there are more hearings right now taking place in Capitol Hill, seeking to understand the full extent of the dangers from that January 6th riot. We have a former defense secretary claiming fear of the media as to why he didn't act sooner. But in these hearings, some Republicans have tried to absolve Trump for what happened. Some are even trying to paint Trump's supporters as the true victims of this incident. Congresswoman Liz Cheney warned about the direction of her party when she spoke to reporters following the vote to remove her from leadership. We must go forward uh, based on truth. We cannot both uh, embrace the big lie and embrace the Constitution. And going forward, uh, the nation needs it. The nation needs a strong Republican Party. Uh, the nation needs a party that, uh, that is based upon fundamental principles of conservatism. And I am committed and dedicated to ensuring uh, that that's how this party goes forward. And I plan to lead the fight to do that. Congresswoman, how concerned are you that former President Trump might end up back in the Oval Office, and what are you prepared to do to prevent it? Uh, I uh, will do uh, everything I can to ensure uh, that uh, the former president never again gets anywhere near the Oval Office. We have seen the danger uh, that he continues to provoke with his language. Uh, we have seen his lack of commitment and dedication to the Constitution, uh, and I think it's very important that we make sure whomever we elect is somebody who will be faithful to the Constitution. And after those remarks, Congresswoman Cheney sat down with my uh, NBC News colleague, Samantha Guthrie, for more. Uh, here's a quick clip from that sit down. Are you the leader of the opposition in exile right now in the Republican Party? I, I intend to be the leader, uh, one of the leaders, in, in a fight to help to restore our party, in a fight to bring our party back to substance and principles, uh, and in a fight to, to make clear that we won't participate in, in a really dangerous effort that's underway. A lot of people frame this as a battle for the soul of the Republican Party. This is the, I think, opening salvo in that battle. And, and it's a battle we have to win um, because it's not just about the Republican Party. Uh, it's about the country. The Trump political team is actively looking to coalesce around a primary challenger to you. What is your message to them? You know, uh, bring it on. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place.
Download the NBC News app today.